Brands are people, people are brands. Um, we've sort of headed there. And perhaps nobody um, in entertainment, in marketing, has seen the evolution of this movement to people sort of being their own brands as much as our guest today. Um, Rev was there since the beginning. We're going to be talking about My Adidas, which is a song by Run DMC that came out, um, which literally was the first entryway of, of a celebrity and music into uh, brand marketing. And we're going to talk about that story. And I think that he's got a lot to share for you guys in terms of where we are, how we got there, and where we're going tomorrow. So I just am so excited to welcome Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member, hip hop icon and legend. Get the phones out, bring it out for my boy, Red Run. So really sleazy. All they just say is please me. Or spend some time and rock around. I said it's not that easy. It's tricky to rock around, to rock around. That's right, on time is tricky. How is it, baby? It's tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. That's right. My dream is to share the stage so much, with him and so start much rapping. stuff in my pocket man. yeah you can get out. any sponsored items you're gonna be pull out or no, just, we're, just we're my phone and my keys and my money and just... so rev just got off a red eye and yeah, he was came straight here straight here um he's not the type to, to bail out the show must go on so really appreciate you being here thanks man. Uh, before we get started i want to show I, I put together a quick video that i found online actually of the history of run dmc and how it led up to my adidas so i just want to run this really quickly to give us all some context In 1983, straight out of Hollis, Queens, came three bad brothers who, along with their ridiculously savvy manager, Russell Simmons, refused to conform to pop standards and decided they were going to dress on stage the way they would dress on the streets. The whole city was wearing Adidas. We went to Georgia. Everybody was rocking Adidas. We went to Boston, South Carolina, North Carolina, Chicago. Everybody was started rocking Adidas suits and Adidas because of us. Come on, put him up in the air. It's one thing for a rapper to say Adidas, but it's another thing to see 10,000 kids waving sneakers in the air. You know what I mean? And I think that at that point, these big corporations truly understood that we have power. So that was really the start of this movement, obviously, of artists really controlling you know, their own audiences, not needing to go through traditional networks. How did that come about? How did my Adidas come well, about? Tell me the story. The story of um, it becoming a brand besides, they were going out of business when they met us, but we wasn't wearing them. Um, Adidas was going out of business. They were going out of business, but we weren't wearing Adidas to get an Adidas endorsement. We loved the sneaker. You know, it, it ended up being like, you know, my Heinz ketchup. You know, it's like, <laughs> for them, they were happy. We were screaming very loud their name. And, you know, the managers ended up connecting with Adidas to tell them what's going on, that you should come see. And I remember being at the garden and telling everybody to put their Adidas up in the air. And one of the top executives there came and said, I want to do a deal. And then we ended up doing the uh, Adidas deal and creating our own line. Um, some sneakers called Cadillacs and different stuff like that. And, you know, it wasn't in our mind that we were trying to do it. And that's what I make sure that um, some of these people that just go out and just do things, it'll get, they'll smell it out and say, that's not authentic. But for us, it was, you know, comes from our heart. So, and I also found this video online, which I thought was amazing. Yo, what's up, Adidas? I'm Jam Master J. DJ Run, and my name is DMC, and this is my man Hurricane from, from Around the Way. You know what I say? Hollis we, Queens, that is. Word up, and we always rock our Adidas on our feet with no shoestrings in them. I did not win them. I bought them off the app with the Levi denim. I like to sport them. That's why I brought them. A sucker tried to steal them, so I caught them and I fought them. Then I walked down the street and bopped to the beat. With Lee on my leg, leg and Adidas on my feet. And yo, now I'm just standing here shooting the gift. Me and D and, and my Adidas, Adidas standing on two fifth. My Adidas. Adidas can never even buy this much promotion we give them. I reckon it's number what? 10 with a bullet on the black charts. 10 with a bullet on the black charts. 27 on the pop, pop charts. What does it say? Zoom in. My Adidas. My Adidas. Ten on the charts for six weeks. You know what a bullet means? That it's going to the top. So give us a million dollars. <laughs> They gave us a million dollars. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that they was did. the exact number. Right on. And a million then was like a, you know, a, a lot of money now. Yeah. It's still a lot of money. Don't get it twisted. And, and when I saw that, one thing that really just stuck in my mind is that 
today it would be so easy for a brand to find an artist. Right. Right. But back then, you almost had to find the brand. There was no YouTube. Like, you I guys think they knew we were, we were on their radar, but it was up to the managers to connect to make sure that we got a deal going. But it was it, they had to know because they're skyrocketing in Detroit and skyrocketing there. And they probably just felt like maybe they was just going to ride it until, until we gave them a call. But I, you said now the brands are now connecting, calling the artists yeah. instead of the artists Chasing calling. Them. Right, right. So, and, you know, you guys obviously propelled Adidas. You said they were about to go bankrupt and they're doing just fine now. They were, they were going out of business for sure. Yeah, and so was there a point, though, that you felt like later in your career maybe Adidas propelled you? Like, how has that partnership worked over time? And what does that partnership look like? I don't know if Adidas propelled us. Run DMC is its own thing. But, you know, we are definitely a partnership. Run DMC and Adidas to this day, I still wear the stuff. You and, get paid uh, to wear? Are you getting paid to wear that right now? No, but I get paid all the time through certain sneakers that sell when they use my logo. The Run DMC logo is probably one of the biggest logos in the world. Um, you don't all know that logo with the red bars. And, and I think that all happened because, in my mind, Lil Wayne, when he was on fire, he started wearing the shirt. I think he wore it on a cover of Rolling Stone magazine or on the end page. And next thing you know, that caught fire. But people already knew about that logo, but I mean, it's all God's plan, but yeah. it, was, it was amazing what happened after, in my, in my mind, I don't know if Daryl or RIP to J, Master J, would agree with that, but I remember that turn when he was like, he was on the very, very top Little Wayne, and he started wearing that shirt, and it just like, okay, well, you're, the, you're hot right now, you're the king, but you're saying these dudes are the king, so it was great. So you guys obviously very early on partnered with Adidas. I mean, was there internal conversations like, do we even want to have a brand partnership? Should we just keep it at bay? I mean, no, we, no, no, no. We we wanted to get that paid. Dumb. No, we want you know we would get paid, but we didn't. Like I said, we didn't do it on purpose. But you know, when it was time to get paid, our managers wasn't going to let that go up. And then we wanted to create our own um, line of sneakers. I mean, we probably should have just kept these going. But I think we made a couple of these with the Run DMC logo on it, and then we made some sneakers called Cadillacs, and we had shirts and different things. It was an exciting time for me. Yeah, for sure. And you guys kind of started this whole movement of artists, especially in the hip hop world, working with brands. I mean, in, uh, in this, this was one of the spots, but talk, talk to me about this, uh, this clothing line. Oh, that, that's that's well. part of the line right there. That shirt right there. D um, came up with the design for that. And these pants right here, those are the, these in leather. So that's very, really cool. So to have a pair of these in leather was the flyest thing you could have. So, so we came up with that concept like, yo, because we was wearing leather suits and we was also wearing Adidas. So he was like, why don't we just turn the Adidas into leather suits? But, I mean, what did you guys know about fashion design? I mean, ha what gave you the right to... nothing to know. We know what we like to wear. It wasn't... I don't like the word fashion design. We're like, yo, we like those. Make that. Yeah. <laughs> we were, it wasn't that... Even though the word fashion and design isn't like a, a big, long word, but it was like... Yo, this is what we want to wear, and this is how it looks, and draw it on a piece of paper and go to the factory and say, make that. And what's interesting is it, it, that quickly turned a relationship from an endorsement to a true collaboration, which is yes. what we see in modern day. We'll get into a little bit later with Diddy and Ciroc, oh, yeah, or like Dre and Beats. I mean, this was sort of the early time where you're actually building product with Adidas based yes. on your taste and bringing it out to your audience. Yeah, but you know, they made these sneakers, and we fell in love with these. And so I, I got to give Adidas a lot of props for that. It's not like we designed these. We wore them. We loved them. We're from the streets. And people that didn't wear them and didn't know fell in love with them also. And to this day, I'm walking past kids in the airport. And, you know, they just walk right past me with a Run DMC shirt on and the sneakers. And they don't say, they don't say shit. It's like... No respect, man. No, but they don't know it's me. You know, a lot of them do. I'm not, I'm not trying to diss myself. I get a lot of love because when Run's house came, a lot of the kids know me. But I'll, I'll run past a bunch of kids and running past me in Adidas. And I know, like, you wouldn't be wearing those, dude, if we didn't put these on our feet. So, yeah. And were there other brands that you, you've worked with over your career that have, I guess, been prominent that really made an impact? Or is it basically just Adidas? And what it's basically just been Adidas that, that I like to wear. I still wear it. Um, like I said, I like to keep it authentic. I don't like to reach and just do things just to do them. You won't catch me on my Instagram putting up some stuff that I don't love. I refuse to do that. There's no there's So no you don't life. take any money to post ever? No, there's no life. In, if I do, it'll be because I love it. 
but I'm not gonna, uh, Shaquille O'Neal was saying the same thing. I only use what I love. And if you wanna, like, there was trailing. He promotes a lot though, man. Shaq's everywhere. Yeah, but. So he, he must love a lot of shit. He does. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> right. He, he said that the doorbell thing where he just got like a millions and millions ring, of dollars. Ring. He said he that was acquired did, by Amazon. Yeah, but he said that's because somebody was trying to charge him, unless he's lying, charge him a lot of money to put in a system. And he said he fell in love with it and bio. And then I saw that commercial. Did you see the, the, the special on him? I didn't. Yeah, know. he was talking about how he connects with different things. They'll tell him, oh, you should do this, Shaq. I think it was Krispy Kreme donuts. You know, let me just go be behind there and serve Krispy Kreme donuts yeah. to people. And I thought that was cool. But so, what other brands do you love? Um, what would you take money to promote because you really use it and love it? I, I just like what I do. You know, see, the funny thing about the Rev, Rev Run is, it, Reverend Run is a bad idea in the midst of gangster rap. When I first came out and said, yo, I'm a Reverend, I go to church, that's not a good idea. That's a terrible idea for rap. What the hell you mean you're gonna be a Reverend? Yeah, I'm a Reverend, I go to church, I needed to get, you know, my life's, you know, my life's I'm going crazy, I'm gonna go to church every day. And then they wrapped the collar around my neck and my brain said, this is the coolest shit ever. Reverend Run, they were looking at me like I'm crazy when I go on the red carpet, D standing there in Adidas and I got the collar on. But, you know, in my mind it was authentic. It was real to me. And next thing you know, when MTV put it on TV, it's like, I like this guy, the Reverend. He's the, yeah, yeah. He's the Reverend and he got his family and his little kids and he's the Reverend. But that's what I knew it would connect because it was my truth. And I knew it was cool to me. And, you know, it was, it was, I was growing up, getting older, and that's what my life was. So I never do anything that's not authentic. And that's why you could take a uh, Reverend Run, put him on MTV with his Jersey Shore and say, yes, I'm going on MTV and I'm going to wear my Reverend collar and they're going to love it because they respect what's real. So, and, and, I mean, we're in a whole new world these days. I mean, I don't know how exposed you are to it, but this whole thing called influencer marketing, mm -hmm. which is really big, where basically people who have followings will just take money to hold something up. Yeah, I say, know. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's everywhere. That's right? fine. I don't, I'm not mad at it. I'm just I think, But do you, think that, do you think that hurts them? That they're just taking, I mean, over time, what does that do to their yeah, audience? I think obviously in the long run it's going to hurt them. But, you know, if the product's good and you kind of like it and, probably, and it works, it's right. not going to kill the artist. But usually people can smell when you're just taking money. And if they still love you, they'll love you anyway. Yeah. They might be happy. Oh, really? Such and such gave them $80 billion? Or whatever the number is, $80 million? You're not mad at them. You right. Know, you might not be mad. You might be happy that, you got the, that that artist got the money out of that company. As long as, you know, that artist likes it enough. But if it's, you know, just taking and taking and taking, it starts to stink after a while. Yeah. But I don't do it at all. But I'm not, I'm not one to look down on things that's going on. It's not, it's, that's not fun for me. Yeah. I love new things, new rappers. I'm not that disgruntled rapper that's mad at new records and Young Thug and whatever's new. I listen to it and I understand because they were mad at me when I came out. Uh, what is this? You know, there's a bunch of R&B records. What was what was Run DMC? And people were mad. Certain people were mad at Run DMC for doing something new. So who am I to be mad at somebody for doing something new? You know, they, oh, I hate mumble rap. Well, I listen to it. I mean, I don't know what they're saying, but it sounds cool. I'm a yeah. mumble with their ass. Yeah. <laughs> Let's mumble. So mumble in the jungle. Joking, but you, seriously. You guys started, uh, you know, I, I think a whole movement. Uh, There's a video we were showing upstairs earlier, which I think was another kind of uh, landmark moment. Well, I'm going to show you the, the, the Snoop because Snoop. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're going to do right here is we're going to get real smooth, you know what I'm saying? As we go a little something like this, hit it! Lottie Dottie. Trying to drop some lyrics, bro. Lottie Dottie. Just enjoying myself, bro. Lottie Dottie. As hard as I'm gonna work today. You know what, yo, peep this. Lottie Dottie. We like to party. We don't cause trouble and we don't. So Snoop goes on SNL and wears a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. Cool. Unannounced. Not paid for. Unannou unannounced is funny. He liked it. He wore it. He liked it. He wore it. Exactly. But it was he. He didn't do it. He didn't. Really you know, no, no motive behind. But uh, this is the dope thing to wear. That was his style. And at the at that time, Tommy Hilfiger was a predominantly white suburban brand. He wears it and has crossover appeal. And right. all of a sudden, he probably became, wore it after other people was wearing. We were all. Yeah. What was it? But, it? but everybody didn't go to on. Uh, it was in the song. What's the four on one? On Mary SNL. Everybody, that. probably a lot of people was wearing it, but everybody don't get a chance to be on SNL. That's, That's exactly right. It's, it's mainstream and it crosses over. 
Their sales increased nearly $100 million next year. Um, Tommy has a huge run. It's sort of like a predominantly now urban, culturally relevant brand. Can brands still do that today? Can they partner with a, a hip hop artist and actually cross over and have? No, it's, it's up to the hip hop artist to choose it. They can call you, but usually it's more authentic when the artist chooses you. Right, and we were talking about Virgil Abloh, and now he's the creative yeah. director for Louis Vuitton. Yeah, they Vuitton. felt they needed him. You know, yeah. I, I didn't think they would do that, but I'm very happy for Virgil, and I think it's going to be dope. But um, this, it just, it, they needed him. You think he's going to drive crossover appeal for... Uh, they're crossed over on their own. Maybe they, listen, if they got him, they must have needed some help. But I love Louis, so, yeah. and I love Virgil, so I, I can't see it being very proud of Virgil. Yeah. Put Is it, it Louis way. Vuitton or Versace? It's Louis Vuitton. It's Louis, isn't it? Yeah. Dude. I don't get that one. I don't get that one as luxury brands, man. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Louis. I don't got that type of Adidas money yet. Um, so then, that you know, Harlem dude. Let's talk about run time. I went from a rapper to a reverend with no problems. Now I'm a dad. It's still and ain't fly. nothing easy That's about that. Ah! See, I was fly with the gold chain and fly with the gold. Bless you. Daddy, mommy's not upset. You're dismissed. Living out my bag, but I'm never missing home. Papa was a rocker and I'm living ah! on the stage. This is Run's House. So Run's House. So what, cool. what, what they were super interesting about this is, you know, reality TV was sort of like, what I'll call a genetic indicator that social media was around the corner. Because before reality TV, we were watching all scripted shows and right. now all of a sudden you had the real world and then it became Big Brother and American Idol and all these Survivor, all these reality shows which start to show I think all of us that people are inherently interesting and being voyeuristic looking at people is cool and watching scripted shows. You were there at the beginning. I mean, was that a hard decision for you and your family to let cameras in your house? Like what was that all about? It was, my, about it was my decision. So it wasn't a hard decision and I did it out of the love. Again, it wasn't like I'm worried that I'm going to ruin my family by you know, going on television. I wanted to show rap, the, the after rap, all grown up. This is the after rap. This is a rapper who's got older, has a wife and kids, and I was a reverend, so I'm still a reverend, but you, you want to show what is going on inside of the household of rappers, you know? So this was me showing the world what I was doing, and I was happy to do it. And I showed lots of lessons and gave lots of wisdom and you know, a married guy showing whether it's LL or Kanye or Jay Z. Okay, this is what you do. You know, we, we're gonna clean it up as you get older, and um, we're going to get married. We're not gonna just chase girls all day long. And I think that that's what my job is to inspire. I inspired as a kid as Run, and I was able to thank God inspire again when I got older as Reverend Run. And it, it's you know, created entrepreneurs. It created people wanting to be married and wanting to have a stable life. And I believe that some of what I did probably influenced a couple of rappers to say, yeah, for sure. That's the look that I'd rather have than just running amok. And you notice the biggest rappers are married. Jay-Z, Kanye, LL, a bunch of rappers are married. So it's in the back of the kids' minds, there's like, okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, everybody can't live up to it, you know, being married and being um, just, being dedicated to one wife, but it's definitely the goal. And Barack Obama showing that look. It's, it's a fly look that everybody can't live up to, but it's something, it's, um, as they put, hashtag goals. Yeah, sure is, man. Right on. And I mean, it's, the way you talk about it, to you it's probably second nature, but to me it feels super strategic and prescriptive that you're looking at kind of reinventing yourself. I mean, what goes into it, that? Is that something that's just natural, or do you take a step back and talk to your management and say, no, it's time no, no, to no. turn the corner? I'm my own, I have management, but as far as creativity, I'm my own management. There's, there's, if I'm doing something and you call it, what you said, strategic, uh, strategic to save lives, strategic to give love, to strategic to go on MTV with a collar wrapped around your neck and say you're Reverend Run, yeah, strategic in that way, because when you're, quote unquote, preaching the gospel or preaching the gospel of good, preaching the gospel of God, saying here's, what we, here's where rap should go, here's where human beings should go. Yeah, I can call it strategic, but it, but it was my you know, creativity, my love of being, I, this, is a, this is a proud, as, as proud a moment as becoming Reverend Run as it was becoming Run. And I knew that, because Will Smith told me, yo, we got Run, we do Run's House Wednesdays. 
And I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm making it somewhere. That they not only loved me as their favorite rapper, but they love me. Another family man. Uh, they love the family yep. man. So when I can do that, if it's called strategic, then it's strategic for a good cause, but not strategic in a fake way. Sure. That's why I, kind of, I love saying, if you think about it, you're going to go on MTV as a reverend, bad idea, but great idea. Yeah, and when I say bad idea, idea I'm making a joke. It's the greatest idea. So, you, but you know, I don't think I'm everything because I was on, and at the same time, you turn the channel and you got flavor of love. I'm just the other pit stop. I'm the same thing on Instagram. You go through it all day, and you're looking at all the ratchetness, and you stop, and you write amen on Rev Run's page, and you keep moving. Yeah. A moment of, you know, there's no booty shaking. Is that prescriptive? I mean, you, you just pull no, your phone and just and just. Post I just whatever. wake up in the morning and know my lane, and I stay in it, and I don't have to get. But you're like, I'm gonna post this. I'm gonna write. Down. I'm gonna How's write that a whole. Post about my wife and how much I love her and how much it feels good to be married all these years. So I'm going to put up a whole post. Right on. I didn't expect that. A whole post about words of wisdom, which I was doing on the show, you know, from the tub with the phone. So, yeah, you know, this is... Yeah, the tub? Yeah. I yeah. used to really do that. That's why, that's how authentic it was. I would get up in the morning and I would write to, like, 100 friends, you know, maybe less. 30 friends and then went on Oprah and talked about it and it became this big network and then next thing you know I had to um, run's house and I was like what are you going to do on your reality show? So I'm going to start the morning like I usually do. I'm going to get in the tub. Oh really? Yeah. Just put some bubbles dude. We're going to let's save that to the end of the show. Okay. But I usually do it in the morning. Okay. But I was down to show myself that vulnerable. Not only, how crazy is that? You're going to put a collar on your neck in the midst of gangster rap and get in a pink tub. The hell was the matter with me? And write words of wisdom. But it shows you how things in this world can work if you're passionate. That just hit me. I was a reverend in a tub. Anyway, That's crazy, man. I guess if you love something, people will believe in it as much as you, as long as you're true to you. Right. And I'm true to me, and I'm, I'm grateful that I have that um, secure, I'm not insecure. And it was bubbles in the tub too. Jeez. It was clear and I. How much is that? This is almost like the anti-rap. So you're a reverend and you're gonna sit in a tub and you're gonna write words of wisdom. Wow. Yeah. It's you. Um, so let's yeah. get back to business and, and brands. You know. That's a brand. It, yeah, it, it, is your a brand. brand. So I'm I talk about brand. brands are people, people are brands. So you are you're acting, you're treating yourself like a brand, and then brands also kind of have to be people. They have to know who they want to hang out with, who they're along with. And you look interesting. at- Interesting. Yeah, so if you look at like the Diddy, obviously the Diddy's uh, collaboration with Ciroc. Diddy's a genius. Why is he a genius? Because he gives people what they want to have. And he gives you- he How gives, do you think he knows? He gives you a piece of him, because he's cool as hell and he gives you a piece of him. You want to wake up and you want to put on Sean John Cologne and you want to drink Ciroc and you want to dance like him and you want to point things, you want to be as cool as that. So if you want to be as cool as that, you're going to drink Ciroc and put on Sean John Cologne. You have no other choice. So what's interesting about this is, you know, you're talking about you designing for Adidas. And you guys got paid, but you didn't get an equity stake in right. the company like Diddy did with Ciroc. I mean, is but I own the Run DMC logo. Right, which, which helped you in that. But do you yeah. think this is the future? If you're, if you're Drake today, is this what you're looking for? You're looking Drake for has something called Virginia. And he sang about it. This Virginia done me up already. I'm blem for real. So, and if you look, he has a commercial too about some liquor. I don't know what it is called. Virginia. Anybody know about that? Well, if that? you don't know what it's called, maybe he's Virginia the, Black know. or something. Okay. Yeah. There you go. See, I know my stuff. Yeah, there you go. I, I was about to say that if he. You know, he's, he, everybody's. It's not Ciroc leaning, yet, you know. It's not Ciroc yet, but I was just pointing out that he's doing it. Yeah. You said, if you're Drake, do you want to be Diddy? Yes. Is that all you're doing, though? Like, are you only taking Me deals? Me or if them? You're, if, if, you're, if you were Drake, um, are you if only you're taking all, deals if that you have an equity entrepreneur, stake? you want Not to, just getting paid, but actually You want to sell stake. you. You want to sell what you do. I'm only going to buy Drake because I want to hear Drake. And if I think Drake is drinking Virginia, maybe I want to drink Ace of Spade in Virginia. And I might want to drink Ace of Spade, not me as the Reverend, yeah. but <laughs> I'm talking that if you're going to drink something and you want to be, if you think Drake is cool, you might drink what Drake is drinking. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't want to say drink is drinking. Then it's like, I didn't really get no sleep if I'd have said that. No, you're doing good, man. 
So, and then obviously you have the ultimate example of, you know, to Dr. Dre, to our specs. Jimmy Iovine creating that beats. Sounds right. Um, and I do it. You know, you he actually me. fell asleep with headphones on his head. So tell me, tell me about that. Can we turn the sound down just a little bit? Yeah. Run the video to turn the sound down. Or not. Um, so anyway, what you were saying was... I just said that uh, Dr. Dre is so intense into hearing his sound that as a kid he fell asleep with the headphones on his head, his mother said. So I said, you know, it's, it's appropriate that he can get a billion dollars. If you're going to listen to music until you fall asleep with headphones on your head, I like to watch God. You're passionate about something, it's going to happen for you. You know, life wants to weed out those who aren't serious, and you're very serious about what you do, and I, I love what you do, Matt, for real. Thank you. And you're very passionate, and you're always energetic, so you're always gonna succeed because you love what you do. And that's anybody in here that loves what they do. Um, obstacles don't stop you because you love it. Yep. What, 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 what obstacle? Oh, it's not working for me. What? What are you doing it for? Aren't you doing it because you love it? And that's how you succeed in life. Yeah, I mean, to me, this was amazing just because, to your point, he, he really focused on his craft. Like in this he video, loves the sound, so yeah, he cares. his headphones he's... sound good because they have to sound good because they're a part of Dr. Dre. So we all bought Dre's headphones because we want to hear sound like he does, and we all bought the Ciroc because we want to dance like Diddy yep. and laugh and be happy. Yeah. And, you know, so and you look at another company like Bose, who had great-sounding luxury headphones, and they, they didn't have... You who's know, Bose, though? Who's Bose, exactly. Who's Bose? So because they didn't connect with somebody, Dr. Dre, somebody who people followed. He connected his personal. Those rim. are called Dre, Dr. Dre. Head. What are they called? Beats, Beats by, by Dre. Okay, so they are, they're their own thing. Yeah. Well, now they're owned by Apple, but yeah, yeah who well, knows what well, they'll do with it? We happy Dre got paid. Yep, for sure. Um, so let's talk about you and, and modern day Reveron. You know, you obviously have a huge presence on Twitter. Talk to me a little bit more about social media. What platforms are you using? What's working for you? What would you, know, you get out of social media? I like media? Twitter, but I'm, I use Instagram a lot more now. When did you make that shift and why? Uh, I don't remember. I think I just, I, I'm really new school. I, I just, the second something new comes, you know, I was, I was the first one. I was the most retweeted person in the history of Twitter for the first four years. You can Google that. That's a fact. This is when Bieber right. and Abba was around, I was the most retweeted person in the history of Twitter for many years. I just, for some reason, I have a very youthful spirit. I'm not a hater on new rappers. I'm not a hater on new things. I love Twitter. I still tweet, you know, but I do Instagram now. And um, what was the question? Yeah. <laughs> what other pl what platforms work for you? Are you, do you I like Instagram right now and Insta Story. You do Insta you post a lot of Insta Stories I, too? I use Facebook, but you know, I, my brain just has to be where the coolest things are in my mind. Yeah. My son Diggy, like, no, Dad, Twitter's still popping. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Are you? And do you? Do you are you engaging? I don't know. I'm I'm so crazy. I don't even remember to send my Instagram to my Twitter. It's just bad. <laughs> You're like, doing I all right. Click the button. Um, do, when when your fans kind of come back to you and do you try to engage with them one on one and and respond to their yeah I don't follow or? anybody on um. But do you get notified? Someone says something. No, I don't get notified. Um. Uh, just putting it out there and moving on. Look what it says. Please don't be offended if I don't reply there you go. or follow you, but I love you. That's all I'm, I'm only that I'm giving out information and um, giving out lots of wisdom and love. So that's what I do. Right on. And you're working on a big project now um, with Netflix. Yes. What can you tell us about that? And this is, this is kind Not of Not much, but I can tell you that I have a show coming. It's a scripted show on Netflix. Scripted. Scripted. First time with you're me scripted. and my wife. Um, it's a show, it's a truthful show. I told my wife, I'm gonna retire. And I took her out hanging and I turned my back and she's pitching things. I'm like, I just told you I wanna retire. With some rich guys on a boat, I think they own Burger King or something. And I turn my back, I'm jumping in the water. I come back, oh, your wife has a good idea. I was like, honey, I just told you I'm retiring. And then I'm at a, a Barack Obama, Michelle Obama event. How was, and and how Damon was John is there. We was just doing some, you know, some charity. And Damon John from um, Shark Tank is yep. there. I turned my head. She's pitching him. So I said, hey, let me go pitch Netflix that my wife is crazy and that she's not allowing me to retire. So they said, that's a great idea. We don't have any reti retired rapper. Rap is so new. How's he retired? They're like, we love that show. So they bought that show from me. My truth is, and it's a story about me coming home, retiring, and then my wife driving me crazy with all type of new inventions. So you could imagine the... the, the Craziness so it's in my loosely house. based on your life. I thought you said Lucy, and it, she is. It's like Ricky and Lucy. Lucy, what are you yeah. doing, Lucy? That's how I feel. What are you doing? I come home. You're not gonna... 
that's how I feel about my wife. She's very funny, very beautiful. I love her, and it's the truth. And she's I found out just now a very great actress, and I'm happy that they um, Netflix was able to see that. And we made some really the, the showrunner that made Friends is actually running my show, so you know that's one of the biggest sitcoms. So I have and Amblin, which is Steven Spielberg is producing it, and and when's that ABC, come out? ABC. Look at all the power. I got ABC, Amblin, and um, Netflix all in one to make my show, and it's it's. I just finished the ten episodes, and I think it'll hit um, Netflix on August tenth. Gotcha. So I'm very excited. Everybody about look it. out for that. It's pretty funny. It's good, and it, it's my truth again. Retired rapper. And how is acting? I mean, how is being an actor? I mean, I, mean I, I don't play myself. I play a guy named Joe Speed. So it's MC Joe Speed. And it's uh, loosely based on my life, but probably not that loose, you know. I'm really trying to retire, but life won't let me and wife won't let me. So between wife and life. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's and a, you're still so performing So it's very funny. Too? Yeah, we got a show in London, Run DMC. Well, I do a lot of shows, as you know, with DJ Ruckus. Yep. I have um, um, residencies all around the world, in Vegas and Atlantic City with DJ Ruckus. But Run DMC does three, four shows a year. So you're not retired in real I can't. Life. Nobody, they won't let me. Yeah. But I, I, I am in my mind. I'm really retired most when I'm hanging with DJ Ruckus DJ because he's scratching. I'm just he's playing. He's got the on. energy. You know, you just, it's like, I don't drink, but it's like the drunk guy. Who get the mic? You know, Ruckus is a lot younger than me, and I just go up, he DJs, and I get on a mic, and I play with him, like, move, move, Ruckus, and I have fun. So that's just like I get to be a 50-year-old guy DJing in Vegas and people enjoying it, a bunch of kids in Vegas, and it's just the coolest thing. So you guys thing. put on a great show. How long do you think you're going to be on stage and performing for? I mean, um, again, I'm retired, but... But you're not. I'm not. <laughs> I am retired, but, right. but I'm not. It's so funny. I'm retired, but I'm making a show about being retired. It's right. really stupid. So That's, meta. That is um, so stupid. Cool. Well, we got a couple of minutes left. Um, I'd love to take some questions from the audience. If anybody has a question, for Holla. Right, right here in the front row. Um, with all the reboots coming back, would you consider louder? With all the reboots coming back, reboots coming back. Would you consider doing Red, Red's house again? Or nah, but this show. The question was, would you consider, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, doing will a I, Will I do a Runs House reunion? Right. No, but this show will feed that thing you want. Because just me and my wife, we got some different kids, but it's very funny and it's very new. <laughs> Matter of fact, Anthony Anderson's son, Nathan Anderson, plays my son. So you'll, you'll enjoy seeing me back in action, being loving to some kids and to my wife. And it's funny and it's good and it's Runs House-ish. You heard of Blackish? This is Run's House-ish. Yeah. Kind of Run's House. Yeah, right up here. Do you give, do you give your kids social media advice? The question is, do you give your kids social media advice? Do I give them advice? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Yes, and a 53-year-old man, does he give his kids? That's a great, that makes me feel very proud that you might ask me, can I teach them about social media? Uh, you know, they stay in their own lane. Like Diggy, if you go to his thing, um, he's on Grownish this year. Um, he posts when he thinks he should post, and he's very conservative would be the word, and he's very smart with the way he posts. So I don't have to tell him too much. It's kind of like pretty smart kid. Well, Angela, that's a whole nother beast. <laughs> she, anyway. um, I don't want to just call on people on the front. Is, is there a mic back there? Can I call on someone? Anyone oh, just seat? yell, holla. Yeah, right there. He's got to stand up and yeah, scream. Yeah, right here, right there, cool. Real loud. What inspires you to be your most authentic self on social media? What inspires you to be your most authentic self on social media? What inspires me is, I mean, I just, I love being, I love knowing that I'm not going to chase what somebody else is doing to get a result. Again, my favorite thing is, not a good idea, Reverend Run, but I'm in love with it. I'm going to prove myself right that this is going to work on MTV. So I'm inspired to stay in my damn lane and to do it and know that people are going to respond to that, not following trends, be the trend. One more question over in the end here. Turn 
them. Back in the day, I don't, like he said, they wasn't really approaching. Like we, there was nothing to turn down Run DMC. We had the Adidas, and now it's a whole new world. And that's the point of him bringing me up here. And he said that, you know, back then you would approach them. So we kind of, again, just wore Adidas, made a record called My Adidas for no good reason besides for my Adidas, I love these things. Oh, snap, I got a song. Ode to Adidas, called My Adidas. And I always make my joke is, damn, they got lucky. I mean, I got lucky too, but my Heinz ketchup, who does that? Yeah. But that's what we did for Adidas. We screamed it as loud as we could, top of our lungs, because we loved it. Had no expectations. Managers was like, they kind of want you. We're going to call and get that million dollars. I like, I, I could use a million dollars. So I took the million dollars. Yeah. Right on. I think the most common theme that comes out that I took away from this is just figure out what you love, your passion, go hard at it, focus, mm -hmm. don't chase other things, don't right. chase the money, and it'll, good things right. are gonna come to you, and that's something that's said a lot, but I mean, you're living proof of that. Yeah, and if you see something that you do love or a trend that you do love that you wanna be involved in, like reality television, I didn't create it. Ozzy Osbourne was there before me, but it was a great thing for me to do also. I didn't create it, but I, uh, and I say the same thing with rap music. I didn't create rap music. I, I always say, um, I didn't create this ish, but I damn sure perfected it. Right on. Well, we're going to end it with that. Guys, give it up for Rev. Coming up for Red Eye. Make sure to check out his Netflix show in August. Peace. That's it. Drop the mic. Done. <laughs>